Hi YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. I know that I very frequently make light of a, a potential invasion from space on my channel. I'm, I'm always making fun of it, but I just found out it is happening, and it is happening in the next two weeks. I've, I've tried to make my own preparations. I, I, I only had enough for a, a yarmulke. I, I hope that that's sufficient for the purposes. Actually, this is reused aluminum foil. It's very possible to just wash and reuse aluminum foil. I've used this particular piece for cooking several times, uh, many times over the past seven years. I, I haven't bought a new roll of aluminum foil in well over a decade. It's very possible. It's actually quite delightful. But at the moment, we need to be more concerned about an invasion from space in the next two weeks. YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Now, because you're into preparedness, you might have heard this story before, but if you haven't, you couldn't be blamed that heavily because I really haven't seen that many mentions of it in the news media. I've just seen like a couple notes about it. And I think one of the reasons for that is that there's not a lot of advice that anyone can give anyone because they don't really know, they know that this thing's definitely going to happen, but they don't know where and they don't know when, but it's soon. Uh, what's going to happen is there's a space station uh, orbiting the planet right now. It's called the Tiangong-1. It was Chinese, uh, the first Chinese space station that was uh, put up in orbit. And it is completely out of control at this point. It's going to crash into the Earth. We know that much. Uh, and we know that it's going to be somewhere uh, between the 43rd parallels, which puts it somewhere in this area, which is almost all of the planet where people live. So, I mean, it could crash into people's houses, it could crash into a city, it could crash into a nuclear power plant, more likely than anything, since most of our planet is ocean, it'll probably crash into the ocean, but nobody really knows where it's going to crash because nobody knows really when it's going to crash. It's supposed to completely have its orbit fall apart and, and enter our atmosphere sometime around the end of March into early April. People really don't have a solid sense of exactly when it's going to happen because they don't really have enough information to to figure out all that stuff because it's out of control and people don't know what's going on, except for the Illuminati and the reptilians, of course, who are, you know, puppeting this whole thing. Uh, this gives us a opportunity to think about what those uh, risks would be if this thing happened in your area and to prepare against some of those because uh, the, the risks associated with this are not exclusive to space stations crashing into the planet. Obviously, there's the physical risk of getting impaled <laughs> by shrapnel, that's obvious, uh, but there is an additional risk uh, that Many scientists believe that a fair bit of, of this thing is going to survive re-entry, re and that involves a lot of substances and chemicals that are on the space station. One of them in particular is hydrazine, uh, which is a chemical that's used in rocket fuel. Uh, hydrazine is a reasonably dangerous substance. You don't want to be breathing it in. You don't want to be getting it into you. It can get, cause all sorts of problems, uh, you know, later in life. Also, uh, some skin irritation. But one of the dangers of it is that it doesn't have a lot of warning signals. Uh, when you're exposed to it, you don't necessarily know immediately you're being exposed to something terrible. So people might be exposed to this and not know that it's anything out of the, no the ordinary. Um, so it's worthwhile thinking about some precautions. The best I can tell, and I've done a fair bit of research about this, if you're looking for a respirator mask that's going to protect you from this substance, if it crashes in your area and it's you know, floating in the air and you don't want to be inhaling it, uh, you're going to be looking for a respirator mask that can filter out ammonia, uh, things of that nature, uh, you know, with a carbon filter or, or whatnot, to filter out all that kind of stuff. Now, again, this is a very, very low risk. Uh, it's definitely going to happen, but it's very, very low risk for any one individual. You know, you're probably going to be fine. I'm probably going to be fine. Uh, but it it gives us an opportunity to think about uh, other situations where it might be good to have a respirator because, you know, humans are really good at coming up with catastrophes where we're releasing toxic substances out into the environment. You know, I know industry is always saying, you know, we have so many safeguards this time, nothing will go wrong, but it invariably almost always does eventually. Uh, so it's worthwhile to think about, like, what would you do if there was, you know, gases that you don't want to be breathing in your area, uh, things that aren't going to get filtered out just with like, you know, putting a shirt over your face or an, even an N95 mask or something like that. Do you have any respirators or anything that would allow you to function in an area uh, without, you know, sickening yourself to, you know, to either evacuate that area or shelter in place or whatever you feel uh, is appropriate to do at that time? Whenever there's events like this, I think is a good opportunity to just game that out in your head, see if there's some things you'd like to have, because if you have these things, they can take a dreadfully terrible event and make it slightly less awful. <laughs> so that's it. Give me your thoughts in the comments below if this is something that you've heard of, if you think this is something to, to pl plan for, uh, and uh, that's it.
Good luck. Good luck. I hope you survive. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.